Hey everyone, Jessica here from JewelryTutorialHQ.com. One of the most common questions I get from readers and viewers is, what kind of tools do I need to buy if I want to get started making wire wrap jewelry? Well, if you're just getting started, you really only need three pairs of pliers. Now these three tools are actually the only jewelry making tools that I had for a really long time after I got started making wire wrap jewelry. So you don't need a whole lot of fancy tools or equipment or anything like that and you definitely don't have to spend a lot of money on them. But there are a few particular things that is important for you to look for when you go to choose those jewelry pliers. That's what I'm going to help you with today. This next part of the video is actually an excerpt from my new online course, Wire Wrapping for Beginners, and I'm sharing it with you today because it answers all of the questions that beginners have when they're looking at their tools, and I think it'll be really helpful for you. If you'd like to learn more about the Wire Wrapping for Beginners course, I'm going to put a link below the video, but for now, let's take a look at those tools. In this lesson, I'm going to go over the tools that you need for making wire wrapped jewelry. I'm going to show you chain nose pliers, round nose pliers, and flush cutters. And something that's important for all of these tools is to make sure you look for something that's going to fit comfortably in your hand. So if you have a larger hand, you might, and you might prefer longer handles. If you have smaller hands, you might prefer smaller handles. But the important thing is you want to find something that feels comfortable to you. And um, another consideration to that end is nice soft padded handles instead of hard rubber or plastic handles. If you're going to be using these a lot, you want them to be as comfortable as possible. And there are definitely some brands out there that have a more ergonomic design. Most jewelry pliers should be equipped with these little springs here so that your hands don't have to work as hard when you squeeze and then release. The springs automatically open them back up so you don't have to actually go in and open the pliers back up with your hands each time between uses because that would get really tiring. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about brands. I d definitely have some brands that I can recommend, including these Tronex. These are amazing tools. They are really top-notch, high quality, very comfortable, and they're going to last forever. But if you're just starting out, you don't have to spend a lot of money. There are plenty of options out there for each of these, um, and I will just I'll tell you what to look for. Starting with the chain nose pliers, chain nose pliers in general are a long tapered jaw that is smooth and flat on the inside and kind of a rounded edge on the outside. We use chain nose pliers for gripping wire, bending wire, opening and closing jump rings, simple loops, eye pins, ear wires, etc., and tucking in wire ends after wrapping. We don't want to use them for trying to make loops. The first feature about chain nose pliers that is extremely important is that they have a smooth, flat inner jaw. There are lots of pliers out there that are not specifically for jewelry making that are going to have ridges in them and you do not under any circumstances want to use that when you're making wire jewelry because those ridges will leave marks in your metal because the wire is soft enough to bend, that means it's soft enough to take marks from the tools. Another feature to look for is a nice long tapered jaw. I like these particular ones because they have a really nice fine tip, which is excellent for getting into fine places um, when we're going in and tucking in our wire between wrapping beads. Let's talk about round nose pliers. Round nose pliers have two cone-shaped jaws that are wider at the base and finer at the tip. We use round nose pliers for making curved bends and for making loops. We don't want to use them for gripping wire or trying to make sharp bends. What I like to look for in round nose pliers is the length of the jaw. I like a long jaw that's really nice and finely pointed at the end. This gives me a lot more options for the sizes of loops that I can make with this one tool. So depending on where you place your wire on the round nose plier jaw, it's going to determine the size of the loops that you make. So these can actually make a pretty decent sized loop down at the bottom 
to a really, really tiny loop up at the top, which is, is good also for starting spirals and making coils and things like that. Next are the flush cutters. This is a tool that you're going to use when you're clipping your wire. They're called flush cutters because they produce a nice flat cut. However, you have to use the back of the tool to get that flat cut. As the tool cuts through the wire, it only leaves a flat end on one side of the cut piece of wire. The other side, as you can see on the right, is going to have a bevel to it. So throughout the course, you're going to hear me say that a lot. Start with a flush cut, and that's what I mean. Use the back of your flush cutters to make that cut. Another thing to keep in mind for flush cutters, um, they should have a very fine tip. This is going to help you get in really close and snip right up where you want to clip the wire so you don't waste a lot of wire and you don't have a lot of um, extra wire to deal with. These fine points are going to allow you to do that. But other times when you're just cutting wire, if you're just cutting a length of wire, Try to use the middle or the back of the plier jaw instead of the tip. You want to preserve the tip of your tool so they last longer and save those for just when you need to get into those tight spots. The rest of the time, if you're just cutting a piece of wire, you can clip it using the middle or the back of the jaw. That's going to help your tools last longer. Also, when you're using these, when you're using the back side, say you just want to trim off a little tip of wire. Get in the habit of putting your finger over that or holding that wire somehow or pointing it down towards the table as you cut because that wire is going to go flying and it's not really fun to have lots of little sharp pieces of wire in your carpet but also they could fly up and hit you in the eye. So I recommend just getting in the habit of placing your finger on the top of the flush cutters here while you clip the wire. And that's not going to get your fingers because there's a nice um, concave surface there. You can actually rest your finger right on the top as you clip and you're not going to get any skin in there. Another thing to keep in mind for all of these tools, these are your standard tools that are good for the wire that we're going to be working with in this course, which is 22, 24, and 26 gauge for the most part. If you start venturing into thicker gauge wire, I want you to make sure that the tools you're using are appropriate for that. They should tell you what gauge to use. Uh, for example, I wouldn't want to use these really nice cutters on 14 gauge wire. That's going to be really too thick for these and that's going to wear down and damage the tool. So I tend to have another pair that is a more heavy duty pair of flush cutters for thicker wire. But again, for this course, you shouldn't have to worry about that. I just wanted to let you know in case you branch out into thicker wire, I don't want you to damage your, your tools. The same goes for the tips of the round nose and the chain nose pliers. If you're working with extra thick wire, say you're working with like 14 or 12 gauge, you're not going to want to use the fine tips of these pliers on those heavy gauge wires. I would recommend a sturdier pair of pliers that's specifically recommended for heavier wire for that. See the difference there? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and you have a better idea of the tools that you need to get if you want to get started making wire wrap jewelry. Don't forget, if you'd like to learn more about my new course, Wire Wrapping for Beginners, that you can click the link below the video, or if you're somewhere where you can click on your screen, then you can click this link right here, and it'll take you right to the course page where you can see all of the projects that are going to be in the course, plus I've actually unlocked a couple of free lessons so you can see some of the lessons that are actually in the course for free. And there's some really good stuff there, so I hope you'll check it out. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.